this video is to describe and explain the use of the 5 meter attacking zones found at each end of the touch field. If we were to look at a touch field from a bird's eye view, we'd see that there would be a try line at one end of the field, there would be a sideline, another try line, and another sideline. The try lines would be marked at each end by two cones, and likewise, the 5 meter line, 5 meters from the try line into the field of play would be marked, which we call a 5 meter line. The, dis the, or the area between the try line and the 5 meter line is known as the 5 meter attacking zone. And this here is where we would score our tries. When you get into the 5 meter zones as an attacking team, there's a few slight differences to where and how you play the ball. We can see here that this team here in, on this line here is defending and this team here is attacking from the 5 meter line. Let's see how it goes. We can see that the player in purple gets touched within the 5 meter zone, which is here. And normally if he was in the field of play, he would have to play the ball exactly where he's been touched, otherwise it would be a handover to the opposition team. However, because he is in within this 5 meter zone, he is able to stop and go back and play the ball from the 5 meters. This allows his team more time and space to try and create a try scoring opportunity. Another way of looking at it is if he had played the ball here where he was going to, this player here now only has to go roughly 1 to 2 metres to touch the dummy half if this person was to become the dummy half. And that means it would give the defensive team a turnover and they would be able to then try and attack. So essentially what it does is it allows the attacking team more time and space to create tries, as we can see here. This is how to use the 5 meter line or the 5 meter attacking zone when you are on attack.